How many friends have you made today? Chapter 8, Part 2. <sighs> Celestia wants to help me. Anon watches as Blue Blood's face shows more confusion. So, Auntie wants to help, and that's a problem? Yes. Why? I don't like being helped. If she helps me, then she'll ask for a favor later. That doesn't sound like something Auntie would do. Blue Blood says, feeling a little sad to hear that. Why does Anon feel worse now? Is it because Blue Blood has a more pure outlook on life, or is it because deep down, Anon knows that he's actually right? I, I, I know she wouldn't, Anon admits. So why not accept her help? Blue Blood pushes. That's the real question, isn't it? Why doesn't Anon just accept her help? He knows that she wouldn't just turn on him, and he knows Luna wouldn't either. Still, all he knows is betrayal pounded into him throughout life. To accept this so easily wouldn't be something he does. I'm afraid, Blue, Anon says in a whisper. I've spent my entire life not accepting another person's help. What, what if I stop being what makes me, me? What, what if by accepting Celestia's offer to help, I end up being some other person inside? Blue Blood isn't too sure how to answer that. It does sound scary, not being yourself anymore. Blue Blood gives a nod. But isn't it also scary not being more than just yourself? Auntie always tells me that growth is good for ponies. His face falls slightly. I, I know I have problems, ponies don't need to tell me, yet I try. I try every day to get better, and it's scary to think that I'll be different, but I'll be different in a good way. Who would have thought that Blue Blood could be so insightful? Manon could only look to Blue Blood in surprise as his words slowly sink in. He's right, in more ways than one. While his life alone always gave him comfort, he can't deny that he enjoys his time with Celestia and Luna more. They've changed his life, and he can't deny that. So, perhaps that small hope inside of him is the product of his own growth. Anon finds his eyes meaning Philomena's. On a primal level, he feels as if he could hear the bird's own thoughts, a certain understanding in his own feelings. It lasted for only a fraction of a second, but he knows what he needs to do. Philomena gives him a shallow nod as she takes to the sky. Anon stands up and lays his hand atop Blue Blood's mane. You're right, Blue. He pats him a few times before taking off. I'll see you around. Anon adds as he gives Blue Blood a small wave. Blue Blood's lips slowly turn into a smile as he watches Anon walk away. He did it. He helped some pony, just like his auntie helped him all those years ago. She will be proud. He knows she will. Luna lay upon her bed in the fetal position. She stopped crying a while ago. All she can do now is lay in bed and think about what she's done. She broke her only friend's trust. Her eyes slowly threaten to start the waterworks as she thinks over what he said. She doesn't want to lose him. He means everything to her. He understands her, listens to her. Kindred spirits, in more ways than one. Please don't leave us not. Luna whispers to herself. Language, Luna. Luna freezes up at that voice. She slowly rolls over to face the door of her room. Standing at the side of her bed is him. Anon stands there, with a certain fire in his eyes. Oddly enough, Luna doesn't feel any fear. Instead, she feels a great amount of relief. She quickly sits up and clears her face. Anon, I didn't hear you knock. Luna says, trying to play as if everything is alright. Anon doesn't say anything as he rests a single knee onto her bed. She raises a brow at this action, but before she can react, Anon grabs a hold of her and brings her to his chest. Luna is in a great deal of shock at Anon's forwardness. She's never known him to even start a hug on his own. She nuzzles into his chest as he holds her. I'm sorry, Luna. I didn't mean what I said, Anon says. No, it should be I that is sorry, Anon. I shouldn't have shared your own dreams with my sister, Luna says with sadness. We understand if you wish to never be our friend again. She can feel his grip on her tighten. I don't want to lose you as a friend, Luna. I'm afraid, to be honest, he admits with shame. Afraid of what? Losing myself. Luna looks up to him, puzzled. What do you mean? She asks. I think it will be best if I tell you and Celestia at the same time. Very well. Luna nuzzles her face into Anon's chest once more before he pulls away. I'll bring Celestia to the dining hall, and from there I'll tell you both everything. Luna gives a nod. I will be there. Anon gives a nod as he takes his leave. Luna knows that something serious is going to happen soon, yet she can't help the large smile on her lips. The worries that plagued her the entire morning are gone. Anon is still a friend, and that's all she needs to know. Celestia still sits upon her throne in thought. The princess has requested that no visitors are to enter the throne room. 
Celestia hears one of the guards by the door speak. Get out of my way. She doesn't get a chance to speak out as she finds Anon shoving her guard out of the way, as if he were but a fool. Celestia finds her mind wondering how he had become so strong. All the guards around were readying themselves to detain him, but with a wave of her hoof, they stand their ground. Anon doesn't hesitate as he approaches a throne, a certain look the princess can't place on his face. She just holds her mask as firmly as she can. That look in his eyes. There was a certain determination behind it. He doesn't even stop at the foot of her throne as he walks all the way up to her. They're practically face to face now, as Anon stands there. What bring- Celestia finds her voice go out as her mind tries to process what's happening. It isn't very hard to understand because Anon is hugging her. She really can't find any words for this moment, but nothing really needs to be spoken out as Celestia wraps her wings around Anon. She can feel some tears slowly working their way over her cheeks as the weight lifts from her shoulders. I guess I haven't been a very good friend, Anon says. No, 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 you've been- Anon leans back some so he could face Celestia. When she looks into his eyes, she silences herself. He needs to tell her something. That much is clear from his eyes alone. I haven't. Friendship is about trust. It's about give and take. But I haven't allowed you to give. What we had wasn't a friendship. Not really. He looks away. I know you want to help Tia. That's just the pony that you've always been. He locks eyes with her again. I'm not mad at you or Luna. I just don't want to lose what we have. He slowly pulls away from her. She can feel her wings wanting to pull him back, but she reluctantly lets him go. He rubs the back of his neck. We can't be friends if we're not honest with each other. Asai leaves him. I'll tell you and Luna everything. What happened with the elements and the ponies of Ponyville. No lies, no tricks. I think it's the least I could do. Celestia isn't sure what to say. She just finds it best to keep silent for now. I'll meet you and Luna in the dining hall. I'll be there. Celestia finally says. Anon gives a nod as he makes his way out of the throne room. Once he leaves, Celestia looks to one of her guards. Have every pony clear out the dining hall. Not a single soul will be present. She commands. He then gives a salute. Understood. Celestia looks back to where Anon left. She still holds her princess mask on, but her lips are turning up into a smile. One problem is solved, yet another one is still present. She then rises from her throne as she readies for the talk that is about to happen. Even though Anon is going to talk to the princesses, I still feel like he's going to hide one or two things from them. But as always, we'll find that out in the future. You know the drill. Anywho, let's get on to our confident donators. Top donators, TacoCat598, Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkseid, Ponyman, and Gauntlet. Czar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Dospo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Cadge, Rune Slife9852, Hunter Norman, Dash of Evergreen, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Tal Raja, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brother and Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Sky Ochia, Leslie Perkett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Kids and A9, Lightskin, Monster Kitty, Tim Bob, Starlight Glimmer, Lightning Blitz, Squiddy Boy, David D. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Pierce, Hunter Mara, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, Teal Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Rakow, Misery CU, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, Nissa Rusan, Vazuri, Dyslexic Character Sheets, Just a Random Boy, Hudrick Plenkar, A Crazy Person, Ponyman365, Neapolitan, Six of Nine, Shyfire, Stamp, and Dion Baseri. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.